optical laser pulses are flashes of light. They are the shortest event ever created. I will now explain a method to temporarily characterize these ultra short light transients, namely the intensity autocorrelation. So we should first consider that in order to measure a short event in time, we need a shorter one. For example, if we want to measure the duration of a laser pulse, we need a detector whose response is shorter than the duration of the laser pulse. So for laser pulses with duration below 10 picoseconds, we can use, for example, a detector. The fastest detector available is uh, a fast uh, photodiode in combination with the fast sampling oscilloscope. And we can measure directly the duration of the pulse. But for pulse duration below 10 picoseconds, then we need to use the pulse itself in an all optical measurement. So let's start from the electric field of the laser pulse. It's corresponding to the product of the temporal amplitude and a cosine carrier wave, where omega is the carrier frequency and phi is the temporal phase of the pulse. And the intensity of the pulse is, of course, the square of the electric field or proportional to the square of the electric field. So the amplitude of the pulse and the phase completely characterize our laser pulse. We should now also consider that if the temporal amplitude of our pulse varies slowly, then we can define an average intensity profile, which is corresponding to the square of the temporal amplitude of our pulse. So intensity autocorrelation is a technique to measure this uh, intensity, average intensity profile of the pulse. The scheme for an intensity autocorrelation is represented in this figure. We first need to create a replica of the main pulse and the replica is created by sending the pulse through a beam splitter. The two replica are then properly delayed by using a translation stage and the delay created between the two pulses is tau. The two pulses are then focused inside a nonlinear medium, for example a second harmonic generation crystal. The SHG crystal produces a signal which is at twice the frequency of the main pulse. So the intensity of the produced signal is proportional to the product of the intensity of the two pulses. And the signal which is measured for example by a detector is our autocorrelation signal and it is a function only of the delay between the two pulses. So in the detector we will measure the second order intensity autocorrelation which is the easiest way to obtain a, an estimation of the laser pulse duration. If, for example, the laser pulse is a Gaussian pulse with a full width at half maximum called delta tau pulse, then it will produce an intensity autocorrelation signal which is still a Gaussian with a full width at half maximum which corresponds to 1.41 the duration of our laser pulse. Although this technique allows to obtain an easy estimation of the pulse duration, it has several limitations and ambiguities. For example, uh, the intensity autocorrelation is always symmetrical with respect of time. So from the autocorrelation, we cannot determine the direction of our laser pulse. Also, the intensity autocorrelation does not provide any information concerning the temporal phase of the pulse and different intensity can give rise to the same autocorrelation signal. So 
there is no unique assignment. To overcome this limitation, many other techniques have been implemented. For example, the frequency resolved optical gating technique, or FROG, and the spectral sharing interferometry for direct electric field reconstruction, or SPIDER. Both these techniques allow us to determine completely the uh, intensity profile and phase of our laser pulse.